but unkindly that thou, Iago, who hast had my purse as if the strings were thine, shouldst know of this. Sorry, but you'll not hear me. If ever I did dream of such a matter for me. Thou toldst me thou didst hold him in thy hate. Despise me if I do not. Three great ones of the city in personal suit to make me his lieutenant off came to him. And by the faith of man, I know my price. I am worth no worse a place. But he, as loving his own pride and purposes, evades them. For certes, says he, I have already chose my officer. And what was he? Forsooth, a great arithmetician, one Michael Cassio, a Florentine that never set squadron in the field, nor the division of a battle knows more than a spinster. Mere prattle without practice is all his soldiership. But he, sir, had the election. And I, of whom his eyes had seen the proof at Rhodes, at Cyprus, and on other grounds, Christian and heathen must be believed and calmed. He, Cassio, must his lieutenant be, and I, God bless the mark, his moorship's ensign. By heaven, I rather would have been his hangman. There's no remedy. Tis the curse of service. Now, sir, but judge yourself whether I am in any just term a find to love the moor. I would not follow him then. Content you. I follow him to serve my turn upon him. And following him, I follow but myself. For when my outward action doth demonstrate the very native act and figure of my heart and compliment extern, it is not long after but I should wear my heart upon my sleeve for doors to peck at. I am not what I am. What a full fortune does the thick lips owe if he should carry it thus? Here's a father's house. Call him up, rouse him, make after him, poison his delight. Proclaim him in the streets, and sense her kinsman. Oh, oh, oh what ho! Uh, uh, Brabantio, uh, Signor Brabantio, ho! What ho, Brabantio, thieves, thieves, thieves! Look to your house, your daughter, and your bags, thieves! What is the reason of this terrible summons? What is the matter there? Uh, is all your family with this? Are your doors locked? Why, wherefore I ask you this? Sound, sir, but for shame, put on your gown, even now, now, very now, an old black ram is tupping your white you. Arise, 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 I say. What, have you lost your wits? Most reverend senor, do you know my voice? Not I. What are you? My name is Rodrigo. The worse are welcome. I have charged thee not to haunt about my doors. In honest plainness thou hast heard me say my daughter is not for thee. Oh, sir, sir, sir. And what tellst thou me of robbing? This is Venice. Most grave, senor. In simple and pure soul. I am, come... sir, you are one of those who would not serve God if the devil bid you. Because we come to do you service and you think that we are ruffians, you would have your daughter covered with a Barbary horse. What profane wretch art thou? I want, sir, that comes to tell you that your daughter and the moor are now making the beast with two backs. Thou art a villain. You are a senator. <laughs> this thou shalt answer. I know thee, Rodrigo. Uh, sir, I will answer anything, but I beseech you, if it be your pleasure and most wise consent, as partly I believe it is, that your fair daughter at this odd, even, and dull watch of the night transported with a knave of common hide to the gross clasps of a lascivious moor. If this be known to you and your allowance, we then have done you bold and saucy wrongs. Call up all my people. This accident is not unlike my dream. Relief of it oppresses me already. Light, I say, light. <laughs> Farewell, for I must leave you. It seems not meet nor wholesome to my place to be produced as if I stay I shall against the moor. That you shall surely find him, lead to the Sagittary, the race and search. There will I be with him. So, farewell. It is too true and evil. Gone she is. And what's to come of my despise at time is not for bitterness. Now, Rodrigo, where didst thou see her? Oh, unhappy girl, with the moor, sayst thou? Who would be a father? How didst thou know twas she? Oh, she deceives me past thought. What said she to you? Raise all my kindred. Are they married, think you? Truly, I think they are. Oh, heaven, how got she out? Oh, treason of the blood. Fathers, from hence trust not your daughters' minds by what you see them act. Is there not charms by which the property of youth and maidhood may be abused? Have you not read, Rodrigo, of some such thing? Oh, yes, sir, I have indeed. Call up my brother. 
would you have had her? Do you know where we may apprehend her in the moor? I think I can discover him. Well, pray you lead on. <laughs> on, good Rodrigo. I will deserve your pains. Nay, I lack iniquity sometimes to do me service. Nine or ten times, I thought to have yerked Rodrigo neath the ribs. Tis better as it is. Sir, he spoke with such scurvy and provoking terms against your honor that with what little godliness I have it in full heart for bear him. But I pray you, sir, are you fast married? <laughs> You well advise, Sir Papancio is much beloved, and hath in his effect a voice potential as double the Duke's. He will divorce you. Let him do his spite. My services, which I have done the Signory, shall outturn his complaints. For no, Iago, but that I love the gentle Desdemona. <laughs> but look, what lies come yet? It is the raised father and his friends. You had best go in. Not I. I must be found. My part, my title, and my perfect soul shall manifest me rightly. Is it they? By Janus, I think no. Ah, the servants of the Duke and my lieutenant, the goodness of the night upon your friends. What is the news? The Duke does greet you, General, and requires your haste post haste appearance, even on the instant. Well, what is the matter, then? Something from Cyprus, as I may divine. It is a business of some heat. The governor has sent a dozen secret messengers this very night at one another's seals. Many of the councils raised and met are at the Duke's already. You have been hotly called for. When being not at your lodging to be found, the Senate has sent three several quests to search you out. Tis well I am found by you. I will spend but a word here in the house and go with you. Who makes you here? Grace. He tonight has boarded a galleon. If it proved lawful prize, he's made forever. Do not understand. <laughs> he's married. <laughs> married. You know, come, Captain, will you go? Have with you. Here comes another troop to seek you out. It's Propancio. Be advised, General, he comes to bad intent. Uh, senor, it is the moor. Down with him, thief. Uh, good, senor. You shall more command with years than with your weapons. How oh, about Foul thief, where hast thou stowed my daughter? Damned as thou art, thou hast enchanted her. For I'll refer me to all things of sense, would ever have to incur a general mock, run from her guardage to the sooty bosom of such a thing as thou. To fear, not to delight. Judge me the world, if tis not gross in sense that thou hast practiced on her with foul charms, abused her delicate youth with drugs or minerals that weakens motion. Lay hold upon him. If he do resist, subdue him at his peril. Hold in your hands, both you of my inclining and the rest. Were it my cue to fight, I should have known it without a prompter. How may I? What if I do obey? How may the duke be there with satisfied, whose messengers are here about my side upon some present business of the state to bring me to him? Tis true, most worthy senor. The dukes in council and your noble self I am sure sent for. How? The duke in council? In this time of the night? Bring him away. Mine's not an idle cause. The duke himself or any of my brothers of the state cannot but feel this wrong as twere their own. composition in these news that gives them credit. Indeed, they are disproportioned. Mine letters say 107 galleys. And mine, 140. And mine, 200. A Turkish fleet and buried up in Cyprus. A message. Now, what's the business? The Turkish preparation makes for roads. So I want to report here to the state by Signor Angelo. Uh, what say you by this change? This cannot be. By no assay of reason. Tis a pageant to keep us in false gaze. When we consider the importance of Cyprus to the Turk, we must not think the Turk is so unskillful to leave that which latest concerns him first, neglecting an attempt of ease and gain to wake and wage a danger profitless. Nay, in all confidence, he's not for Rhodes. Here is more news. The Ottomites steering due course towards the Isle of Rhodes have there enjoined them in afterplay. So I thought. How many as you get? About thirty ships, and now they do we stem their backward course, bearing with frank appearance their purposes towards Cyprus. Tis certain that mm. for Cyprus. Here comes Brabantio, and the valiant Moor. Valiant Othello, we must straight employ you against the general enemy Ottoman. I do not see you. Welcome, gentle Signor. We liked your counsel and your guidance tonight. As did I yours. Good your grace. Pardon. <laughs> Neither my place nor aught I heard of business hath raised me from my bed, 
for my particular grief is of so floodgate and overbearing nature that it engluts and swallows other sorrows, and it is still itself. Why? What's the matter? My daughter. Oh, my daughter. Dead? Why? To me, she's abused, stolen from me, and corrupted. Whoever he be that in this foul proceeding hath thus beguiled your daughter of herself, and you of her, the bloody book of law you shall yourself read in the bitter letter after your own sense, yea, though our proper son stood in your action. Humbly, I thank your grace. Here is the man, this Moor, whom now it seems your special mandate mm. for the state affairs hath hither brought. <clears throat> what in your own part can you say to this? Nothing, but this is so. Most potent, grave, and reverend seniors, my very noble and approved good masters, that I have tamed away this old man's daughter. It is most true, true, I've married her. The very head and front of my offending hath this extent no more. Rude am I in my speech, and little blessed with the soft phrase of peace. For since these arms of mine had seven years pith, have used their dearest action in the tinted field. And little of this great world can I speak more than pertains to feats of broil and battle. Therefore, little shall I grace my cause in speaking for myself. Yet, by your gracious patience, I will, around unvarnished tale, deliver of my whole course of love. What drugs, what charms, what conjurations, and what mighty magic for such proceeding I charge with all. I won his daughter. A maiden never bold. Of spirit so still and quiet that her motion blushed she. In spite of nature, of years, of country, credit, everything, to fall in love with what she feared to look on. I therefore vouch again that with some mixtures powerful o'er the blood, or with some dram conjured to this effect, he wrought upon her. Well, to vouch this is no proof, without more wider and more over test. But Othello, speak. Did you, by indirect and forced courses, subdue and poison this young maid's affections? Or came it by request, and such fair question as soul to soul affordeth? I do beseech you, send for the lady to the Sagittary, and let her speak of me before her father. If you do find me foul in her report, the trust, the office that I do hold of you, not only take away, but let your sentence even fall upon my life. Fetch Desdemona hither. Instant conduct them. You best know the place. Until she come, I will, as truly as to heaven, confess the vices of my blood. So justly to your grave ears, I'll present how I did thrive in this fair lady's love and she in mine. Say it, Othello. Her father loved me, oft invited me, still questioned me the story of my life. From year to year, the dangers, sieges, fortunes that I had passed, I ran it through even from my boyish day, up until the very moment that he bade me tell it, wherein I spoke of most disastrous chances of moving accidents by flood and field, heavy escapes and the imminent deadly breach of being taken by the insolent foe, sold to slavery. My redemption thence importance in my traveler's history, wherein of caverns vast and deserts idle, rough quarries and hills whose heads touch heaven. T'was my head to speak, such was my process. Enough the cannibal that each other ate, the anthropophagi and men whose heads do grow beneath their shoulders. <laughs> These things to hear with Desdemona seriously inclined, but Still the house affairs would draw her thence, whichever as she could, with haste dispatch, she'd come again, and with a greedy ear, devour up my discourse, which I observing, took once a pliant hour, and found good means to draw from her a prayer of earnest heart, that I would all my pilgrimage dilate, whereof by parcels she had something heard, but not intentively. I did consent, and often did beguile her of her tears when I did speak of some distressful stroke that my youth suffered. My story being done, she gave me for my pains a world of sighs 
She swore in faith. Twas strange. Twas passing strange. Twas pitiful. Twas wondrous pitiful. She wished she had not heard it. Yet she wished that heaven had made her such a man. <laughs> she thanked me and bade me that if I had a friend that loved her, I should but teach him how to tell my story, and that would woo her. Upon this hint I spake. She loved me for the dangers I'd passed, and I loved her that she did pity them. This only is the witchcraft I have used. Here come the lady, let her witness it. I think this tale will win my heart, too. I pray you hear her speak. If she confessed that she was half the war, destruction on my head if my bad blame light on the man. Come hither, gentle mistress. <coughs> Do you perceive in all this noble company where most you owe obedience. My noble father, I do perceive here a divided duty. To you, I am bound for life and education. My life and education both do learn me how to respect you. You are the lord of duty. I am hitherto your daughter. But here's my husband. And so much duty as my mother showed to you, preferring you before her father, so much I challenge that I may profess to you. To the more, my lord. God be with you. I have done. Please, your grace, unto the state affairs. I had rather to adopt a child than get it. Come hither, more. I here do give thee that with all my heart, which but thou hast already, with all my heart I would keep from thee. <coughs> for your sake, Jewel, I am glad at soul I have no other child, for thy escape would teach me tyranny, to hang chains on them. I have done, my lord. I humbly beseech you, proceed to the fairs of state. Turk, with the most mighty preparation, makes for Cyprus. Othello, the fortitude of the place is best known to you. And though we have there a substitute of most allowed sufficiency, yet opinion, a sovereign mistress of effects, throws a more safer voice on you. You must therefore be content to slubber the gloss of your new fortunes with this more stubborn and boisterous expedition. The tyrant custom, most grave senators, hath made the flinty and still couch of war my thrice-driven bed of down. Most humbly, therefore, bending to your state, I crave fit disposition for my wife. Do reference a place and exhibition with such accommodations and be sought as levels with her breeding. Why, at her father's. I will not have it so. Nor I. Nor would I there reside, to put my father in impatient thoughts by being in his eye. What would you, Desdemona? That I love the more to live with him. My downright violence and storm of fortunes may trumpet to the world. <laughs> my heart subdued even to the very quality of my lord. I saw Othello's visage in his mind. And to his honors and his valiant parts did I my soul and fortunes consecrate. So that, dear lords, if I be left behind a moth of peace, and he go to the war, the rights for why I love him are bereft me, and I, a heavy interim, shall support by his dear absence. Let me go with him. Let her have your voice, heaven vouch with me. I therefore beg it not to please the palate of my appetite, or to comply with heat and proper satisfaction but to be free and bounteous to her mind. And heaven defend your good souls, should you think I would your serious and great business scant, for she's with me. Be it as you shall privately determine, either for her stay or going. The affair cries haste, and speed must answer it. You must away tonight. With all my heart. At nine in the morning, here we'll meet again. Othello leaves some officer behind, 
and he shall, our commission, bring to you with such things else of quality and respect as doth import you. So please your grace, my ensign, a man he is of honesty and trust, to his conveyance, I do assign my wife with what else need for your good grace shall think to be sent after. Let it be so. Good night to everyone. And no, senor, if virtue no delight in beauty lack, your son-in-law is far more fair than black. Look to her more, if thou hast eyes to see. She has deceived her father and made thee. My life upon her faith! Ah, I pray thee, good Iago, my Desdemona must I leave to thee. Let thy wife attend on her and bring them in the best advantage. Come, Desdemona, I have but an hour of love, of worldly matters, and direction to spend with thee. We must obey the time. <laughs> Iago, sayest thou noble heart? What will I do, thinkest thou? Go to bed and sleep. <laughs> I will incontinently drown myself! The silly gentleman. The silliness to live when to live is torment! Oh, come, be a man! Drown thyself? Drown cats and blind puppies. I confess me thy friend, and I profess me knit to thy deserving with cables of perdurable toughness. I can never better stead thee than now. Put money in thy purse. Follow thou the wars. I say, put money in thy purse. It cannot be the testimony should long continue her love to the moor. Fill thy purse with money, nor his to her. It were a violent commencement in her, and thou shalt see an answerable sequestration. Therefore put money in thy purse. These moors are changeable in their wills. When she is sated with his body, she will find the error of her choice. She must have change. She must, therefore, put but money in thy purse. Thou wilt needs damn thyself. Do it in a more delicate way than drowning. Huh? Make all the money thou canst. <laughs> if sanctimony and a frail vow betwixt an erring barbarian and a super subtle Venetian be not too hard for my wits and all the tribe of hell, <laughs> thou shalt enjoy her. Therefore, make money. Ah, pots are drowning thyself. It's clean out of the way. Seek thou rather to be hanged, encompassing thy joy, than to be drowned and go without her. Wilt thou be fast to my hopes if I depend on the issue? I warrant thee. <clears throat> go. Make money. I told thee often, and I retell thee again and again, I hate the moor. My heart, my cause is hard to dying, hath no less reason. Let us be conjunctive in our revenge against him. Thou canst couple to him, thou dost thyself a pleasure, me a sport. <laughs> there are many events in the womb of time which will be delivered. Verse, go. Provide that money. Farewell. Uh, where shall we meet in the morning? At my lodging. I'll be with thee betimes. Well, too. Farewell. Hey, do you hear, Rodrigo? What say you? No more drowning, do you hear? I am changed. <laughs> Go to. Farewell. And put money enough in your purse. I'll sell all my land. <laughs> <laughs> Gain knowledge should profane if I would time expend with such a snipe. But for my sport and profit, I hate the moor. And it is thought abroad that twixt my sheets he has done my office. I know not if be true, but I have a mere suspicion of that kind will do as if for surety. He holds me well. The better shall my purpose work on him. Cassio's a proper man. Let me see. To, to get his place and to plume up my will and double knavery. How? How? Let's see. Oh. 
after a time, to abuse at those ears that he is too familiar with his wife. Cassio had the person that smooth disposed to be suspected, you know, framed to make women false. <laughs> The moor is of a free and open nature that think men honest and but seem to be so and will as tenderly be led by the nose as asses are. <laughs> oh, I have. It is engendered. Hell and night must bring this monstrous birth to the world's light. takes her by the palm. With his little web, it's this lion snare as great a fly as Cassio. <laughs> I smile on her due. Well, I would jive thee in thine own courtship. Such tricks as these strip you of your lieutenantry. It had been better you had not kissed your three fingers so oft, which even now you are most apt to play the sir in. <laughs> Go to, well kissed. Excellent courtesy. Yet again, those fingers to your lips. 
Oh, my fair warrior! My dear fellow! <laughs> to see you here before me. Oh, my soul's joy. If after every tempest comes such calms, may the winds blow till they have wakened death, and may the labor remark climb hills of sea so lip as high and up again as low as hell from heaven. If for now to die, for now to be most happy, for I feel my soul have her content so absolute that not another comfort like to this succeeds an unknown faith. <laughs> Oh, the heavens forbid, but that our loves and comfort should increase, even as our days do grow. Amen to that sweet powers. Oh, I cannot speak enough of this content. It is too much of joy. Oh, and this, oh. and this, the greatest discords ere our soul shall make. Oh, you are well tuned now, but I'll set down the music that make these pegs, as honest as I am. Come, let us to our lodging. <clears throat> I've tried a lot of fashion and dope in my own comforts. <sighs> News, friends! Our wars are done! The Turks are drowned! <laughs> <laughs> How does my old acquaintance of this isle? Honey, you shall be well desired in Cyprus. I have found great love amongst them. I pray the good Iago, go to the bay and disembark my coffers. I'll bring the master to the citadel. He is a good one, and his worthiness does challenge much respect. Oh, once again, Desdemona, well met at Cyprus. <laughs> Come hither. Thou be stallion, this me. The lieutenant watches tonight in the court of guard. First, I must tell thee this. Desdemona is directly in love with him. With him? What is the possible? Lay thy finger thus and let thy soul be instructed. Mark me with what violence she first loved the more but for his bragging and telling her fantastical lies. And will she love him still for prating? Let not thy discreet heart think it. Her eye must be fed. And what delight shall she have to look on the devil? When the blood is made dull with the act of sport, there should again be to inflame it and bring satiety, a fresh appetite, a, a gentleness and favor, a sympathy in years, manners, beauties, all which the moor is defective in. Nature will direct her in it and compel her to some second choice. Who stands so eminent in the degree of this fortune as Cassio does? Why none? None. Slipper and subtle knave. A devilish knave. And besides, the, the knave is young, handsome, and hath all those requisites in him that folly and green minds look after. <laughs> Pest one complete knave. And that woman hath found him already. I don't believe that in her. She is full of the most blessed condition. The wine she drinks is made of grapes. She, if she had been blessed... She would have never loved the moor, blessed pudding. Didst thou not see her paddle with the palm of his hand? He does not mark that? Yes, that I did, but that was but courtesy. And lechery by this hand. It was an index, an obscure prologue to the history of lust and foul thoughts. They met so near with their lips, their breaths embraced together. Fill in his thoughts, Rodrigo. Be you rule by me. I have brought you from Venice. Watch you tonight. For the command, I'll lay it upon you. I'll not be far from you. Cassio knows you not. Do you find some occasion to anger Cassio either by speaking too loud or tainting his discipline? Or what other course you please? Well, um, sir, he is rash and sudden in choler and happily may strike at you. But provoke him that he may. For out of this will I cause these of Cyprus to mutiny, whose qualifications shall come to no true taste again but by the displanting of Cassio. So shall our impediment be most profitably removed, without the which there is no expectation of our prosperity. I will do this, if you can bring it to any opportunity. I warrant him. Go, meet me by and by at the Citadel. I must fetch his necessaries ashore. Farewell. Uh, adieu! <laughs> Cassio loves her. I do well believe 
he loves him. <laughs> Tis hath been a great critic. The more, albeit I endure him not, is of a constant, loving, noble nature, and I dare think it that he will make of Desdemona a most dear husband. Now, I do love her too, not out of absolute lust, though for adventure I stand accounted for the greatest sin, but partly led to die at my revenge. If this poor trash of Venice, whom I trace for his quick hunting, stand the putting on, I will put our Michael Cassio on the hip. Make the more thank me, love me, reward me for making him egregiously an ass and practicing on his peace and quiet even to madness. Tis here, but yet confused. Neighbor, his plain face is never seen till used. Good Michael, look you to the guard tonight. Let us teach ourselves that honorable stop not to outsport discretion. Iago hath direction what to do, but notwithstanding, with my personal eye will I see to it. Oh, Iago is most honest. Good night, Michael. Tomorrow, with your earliest, let me have spe speech with you. Come, Desdemona, my dear love. <laughs> the purchase made. The fruits are to ensue that profits yet to come between me and you. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> ah, welcome, Iago, we must to the watch. This is not the hour, good lieutenant. It is not yet 10 of the clock. The general hath cast us thus early for the love of his desdemona, whom let us not therefore blame. He hath not yet made wanton the night with her, and she is sport for Job. <laughs> she is a most exquisite lady. Oh, and I warrant me full of game. Indeed, she is a most fresh and delicate creature. An eye she has me. It thinks it provokes a parlay to provocation. An inviting eye, and yet me thinks right modest. <laughs> oh, and, uh, and what an eye she has? Yeah, <laughs> me thinks uh, it gives an alarm to love. <laughs> she is indeed perfection. Happiness to the sheep. <laughs> Come, Lieutenant, I have here a stoop of wine, and here without are a brace of cypress gallons and would fain have a measure to the health of black. Not Philip. tonight, good Yash. I have very poor and unhappy brains for drinking. I could well wish courtesy would invent some other custom of entertainment. Come, there are friends. But, but one cup, I, I will drink for you. I have had but one cup tonight, and that was craftily qualified. And look what innovation it makes here. I am unfortunate in my infirmity and dare not task my weakness with any more. It is a night of revel. Come, man. The gallants desire it. Where are they? Here at the door. Pray you call them in. I'll do it. Ha! It dislikes me. <laughs> if I can fasten but one cup upon him with that which he tonight hath drunk already. He will be as full of quarrel and offense as my young mistress' dog. And my sick fool, Rodrigo, whom love hath turned almost the wrong side out, to Desdemona tonight hath caroused potations pottle deep, and he is to watch. Three else of Cyprus have I tonight flustered with flowing cups, and amongst this flock of drunkards am I to set Arcasio in some business that may offend the isle. If consequence do but approve my dream, my boat sails freely, both with wind and stream. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, God, they've given me a rouse already. Good faith, the small one, not past the fight, ah, as I am a soldier. Wine, ho, hang! Ho, 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 and let me the catechin clink, clink, and let me the catechin clink. A soldier's a man, man's life, but a stand by then let a soldier drink. And let me the catechin clink. Swag-bellied Hollander are nothing to your English drink, Pope. Oh. Is your Englishman so exquisite in his drinking? Sir, he drinks you with such facility, you're dang dead drunk. He gives German the, the, the sweats. He, he, he sweats not to overthrow your Hollander and gives him the vomit <laughs> and the next pot will be filled. <laughs> to the health of our general! Hey! I am for it, Lieutenant, and I'll do you justice. Oh, sweet England, huh? For mine own part, though no offense to the general or any man of quality, 
I hope to be saved. Well, so do I too, Lieutenant. Aye, but by your leave, not before me. For the Lieutenant is to be saved before the ensign. <laughs> 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 uh, let's have no more of this. Let's see to our affairs. God, forgive us our sins. <laughs> gentlemen, let's see to our business. <laughs> Do not think, gentlemen, that I am drunk. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, this is my engine. This is my right hand. <laughs> and this is my left. <laughs> I am not drunk. That I can stand well enough and speak well enough. Excellent, well. <laughs> Why, very well then. <laughs> you must not think then that I am drunk. <laughs> To the platform, masters! Uh, Captain, let's set the watch. <clears throat> Do you see this fellow that has gone before? <laughs> he is a soldier fit to stand by Caesar and give direction. And do but see his vice. I pity him. I fear the trust Othello puts him in on some odd time of his infirmity will shake this island. But is he often thus? There's ever more the prologue to his sleep. It were well the general were put in mind of it. Perhaps he sees it not. Or his good nature prizes the virtue that appears in Cassio and looks not on his evils. Is not this true? <laughs> I pray you, Captain Lieutenant, go. It is great pity that the noble Moor should hazard such a place as his own second, with one of an engraft infirmity. It were an honest action to say so to the Moor. Not I, for this fair island. I do love Cassio well, and I would do much to cure him of this evil. Help! 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 Teach me my duty, I'll beat the knave into a drinking bottle! Beat me! Dost thou pray, bro? Nay, good lieutenant, hold your hand, sir, I pray Let you. me go, sir, I'll knock you over the mat. Come, come, you're drunk. Drunk? Oh! Go out, you. Ah! Hey, gentlemen, sir, oh. lieutenant! Oh. Hey, good lieutenant! Oh. Sir, Montano, sir! Boys and boys, that's foul! Now we will hold the town to the right! You will be shamed forever! Oh. Hey, good lieutenant! Oh. Michael, are you thus forgot? For you, pardon me, I cannot speak. <sighs> Worthy Montano, you were wont to be civil. The gravity and stillness of your youth the world hath noted. What's the matter that you unlace your reputation thus and spend your rich opinion for the name of a night brawler? Give me answer to it. Worthy Othello, I am hurt to danger. Your officer Iago can inform you. To defend ourselves, it be a sin when violence assails us. What? In a town of war yet wild, the people's hearts brimful of fear to manage private and domestic quarrel in night and on the court and guard of safety tis monstrous. Iago, give me answer to it. If thou dost deliver more or less than truth, thou art no soldier. Touch me not so near. I would rather have his tongue cut from my mouth than it should do offense to Michael Cassio. Yet I persuade myself to speak the truth, shall nothing wrong him. Thus it is, General. Montano and myself being in speech, there comes a fellow crying out for help, and Cassio following him. <sighs> Sir, if this gentleman steps in to entreat Cassio's pause. Myself, the crying fellow, did pursue, lest by his clamor, as it so fell out, the town should fall in fright. Hmm. He, swift of foot, outran my purpose. When I came back, for this was brief, I... I found them here together at blow and thrust, even as again they were when you yourself did part them. More of this matter cannot I report. But, sir, men are men. The best sometimes forget. Though Cassio did him some little wrong, as men in rage strike those that wish them best, yet I believe he that Cassio followed did him some strange indignity which patience could not pass. I know, Iago. Thy love and honesty doth mince this matter, making it like to Cassio. Cassio, I love thee, but never more be officer of mine. Look, if not my gentle love be raised up, I'll make an example of thee. What is the matter, my lord? 
All is well now, sweet ting. Come away to bed. Sir, for your hurts, myself will be your surgeon. Lead him off. Come, this honor. Tis the soldier's life to have his balmy slumbers waked with strife. You hurt, Lieutenant? I passed all surgery. Harry, heaven forbid. Reputation. 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 Oh, I've lost my reputation. I have lost the immortal part of myself and what remains is bestial. My reputation, Iago, my reputation. I'm an honest man. I thought that you would receive some bodily wounds. There's more sense in that than in reputation. Reputation is an idle and most false imposition, oft got without credit and lost without merit. You have lost no reputation at all unless you repute yourself such a loser. Come, man. There are ways to win the general again. You have been cast in his mood. <laughs> the punishment more in policy than in malice. Sue to him again, and he's yours. I would rather sue to be despised than to deceive so great a commander with so slight, so drunk, so indiscreet an officer. Drunk! And speak parrot! And squabble, swagger, swear, discourse fussing with one's own shadow. Oh, 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 oh. What was it you followed with such violence? What had he done to you? I know not. <laughs> it's possible. I remember a mass of things, nothing distinctly. A quarrel, but nothing wherefore. Oh, that men would put an enemy in their mouths to steal away their brains. Well, you, now you seem well enough. How came you thus recovered? It have pleased the devil drunkenness to give place to the devil wrath. One unperfection shows me another to make me frankly despise myself. Come, come. You are too severe a moraler. I could hardly wish it that it had not so befallen, but since it is as it is, mend it for your good. I will ask him for my place again, and he'll call me a drunkard. Out of as many mouths as hydra, such an answer would stop them all. Do you know a sensible man? By and by, a fool. Presently a beast. Come, come. Good wine is a good familiar creature if it be well used. Exclaim no more against it. Good lieutenant, I, I think you think I love you. Huh? Well approved it, sir. <laughs> I'm drunk. You or any man living may be drunk at a time, man. Huh? I'll tell you what you shall do. Our general's wife is now the general. Confess yourself freely to her. Importune her help to put you in your place again. This broken joint between you and her husband and treat her to splinter. It, it, my fortune to get any lay worth naming? This crack of your love shall grow stronger than before. You advise me well. Nah, I protest in a honesty and true love. I think it freely. There be times in the morning I will beseech the virtuous Desdemona to undertake for me. I'm desperate of my fortunes if they check me here. Now, you are in the right. Good night, Lieutenant. I must do the watch. Good night. Honest Tiago. What's he then that says I play the villain? Hmm? I mean, when this advice is free, I give. And honest, probable to thinking, and indeed the course to win the more again. It is most easy the inclining Desdemona to subdue in any honest suit. <laughs> For her to win the more were to renounce his baptism. His soul is so infettered with her love that she may make, unmake, do what she list, even as her appetite shall play the god with his weak function. <laughs> now, how am I then a villain to counsel Cassio in a parallel course directly to his good? Divinity of hell. When devils with the blackest sins put on, they do suggest it first with heavenly shows, as I do now. For whiles this honest fool plies Desdemona to repair his fortunes, and she for him pleads strongly to the moor, I will pour this pestilence in his ear, that she lifts Cassio for her body's lust. And by how much she strives to do him good, she shall undo her credit with the moor. So shall I turn her virtue into pitch, and out of her own goodness make the net that shall enmesh them all. How oh, now, Rodrigo? My money is almost spent. 
I've been tonight exceedingly well cudgeled, and I think the issue shall be that I shall have so much experience for my pains. And so, with no money at all, and a little more wit, return again to Venice. How oh, poor they that have not patience. But what wound did ever heal but by degrees? Thou knowest we work by wit and not by witchcraft, and wit depends on dilatory time. Does not go well. Cassio had beaten thee. <laughs> and thou by that small hurt hath cashiered Cassio. <laughs> Content thyself a while. By the mask is mourning. Pleasure in action make the hours seem short. Retire thee, go without billeted. Away, I say, you shall no more hereafter. Nay, get thee gone. Two things are to be done. My wife must move for Cassio to her mistress. I'll set her on. Myself the while must draw the moor apart and bring him jump when he may Cassio find soliciting his wife. Aye, that's the way. <laughs> Dull not device by coldness and delay. Not in the bed, then? Oh, oh, I know. The day it broke before we parted. I have made bold, Iago, to send him to your wife. My suit to her is that she will, to virtuous Desdemona, procure me some access. I will send her to you presently, and I will devise a means to draw the more out of the way that your converse and business may be more uh, free. I humbly thank you for it. Never known a Florentine more kind and honest. Good morrow, good lieutenant. I am sorry for your displeasure, but all will sure be well. The general and his wife are talking of it, and she speaks for you stoutly. The Moor replies that he you hurt is of great fame in Cyprus and a great affinity, and that in wholesome wisdom he might not but refuse you. But he protests he loves you and needs no other suitor but his likings to take the safest occasion by the front and bring you in again. Yet I beseech you, if you think it fit or that it may be done, give me advantage of some brief discourse with Desdemont alone. Pray you come in. I will bestow you where you shall have time to speak your bosom freely. I am much bound to you. Mm -hmm. oh. These letters give Iago to the pilot, and by them do my duties to the Senate. That done, I'll be walking on the works. Prepare there to me. My lord, I'll do it. This fortification, gentlemen, shall we see? We wait upon your lordship. Now assured, good Cassio, I will do all my abilities in thy behalf. Good madam, do I warrant it grieves my husband as if the cause were his. Oh, that's an honest fellow. Do not doubt, Cassio, but I will have my lord and you again as friendly as you were. Bounteous madam, whatever shall become of Michael Cassio, he is never anything but your true servant. I know it. I thank you. You do love my lord. You have known him long, and be you well assured. He shall in strangeness stand no farther off than in a politic distance. Aye, lady, but that policy may last so long that I, being absent of my place supplied, and my general will forget my love and service. Do not doubt that. Assure thee, if I do vow a friendship, I'll perform it <laughs> to the last article. My lord shall never rest. I'll watch him tame and talk him out of patience. <laughs> his bed shall seem a school, his board a shrift. I'll intermingle everything he does with Cassio's suit. Therefore, be merry, Cassio, for thy solicitor shall rather die than give thy cause away. Madam, here comes my lord. Oh, madam, I'll take my leave. I stay it. Not now. I am ill at ease, unfit for mine own purposes. Hmm. I like not that. What does thou say? Uh, nothing, my lord, or if uh, I know not what. Was that not Cassio parted from my wife? <laughs> Cassio, my lord, no. Sure, I cannot think that he would steal away so guilty like saying you come. I do believe twas he. Oh, huh. well, now, my lord. I have been talking with a suitor here. A man that languishes in your displeasure. Who is it you mean? Why, your lieutenant, Cassio. Good, my lord. If I have any grace or power to move you, his present reconciliation take. For if he be not one that truly loves you, that is an ignorance and not in cunning, I have no judgment in an honest face. I prithee, call him back. 
Winty hints now. Yes, Faith. So humble that he hath left part of his grief with me to suffer with him. Good love, call him back. Not tonight, not now, sweet Desdemon. Some other time. Shall it be shortly? The sooner, sweet, for you. Shall it be tonight at supper? No, not tonight. Tomorrow, dinner then. I shall not dine at home. I meet the captains at the Citadel. Why then, tomorrow night, or Tuesday morn, on Tuesday noon, or night, on Wednesday morn. I prithee name the time, but let it not exceed three days. When shall he come? Tell me, Othello. I wonder in my soul what you would ask me that I should deny. Uh. Or stand so mammering on what? My good Cassio, that came a wooing with you, and so many time when I've spoke of you dispraisingly, hath ta'en your part to have so much to do to bring him in. My lady, I could do much. I prithee, no more. <laughs> Let him come when he will. I will deny thee nothing. This is not a boon. Tis as I should entreat you, wear your gloves, or feed on nourishing dishes, or keep you warm. Nay, when I have a suit, wherein I mean to touch your love indeed, it shall be full of poise, and difficult weight, and fearful to be granted. You will deny thee nothing. Well, I do beseech you, grant me this. To leave me just a little to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I deny you? No. <laughs> Farewell, my lord. Farewell, my Desdemon. I'll come to thee straight. Okay, you come. Be as your fancies teach you. Whate'er you be, I am obedient. Ah! Uh, <laughs> excellent, rich! Perdition catch my soul. But I do love thee. And when I love thee not, chaos has come again. My noble lord. <laughs> what does thou say, Iago? <coughs> Michael Cassio, when you wooed my lady, know of your love? Ah, yes, from first to last. Why dost thou ask? Uh, but for satisfaction of my thought, no further harm. No, why is thy thought, Iago? I, uh, I did not think he had been acquainted with her. Ah, yes, and went between us very oft. Indeed. Indeed, I indeed discerns thou aught in that. Is he not honest? Honest, my lord. Honest, I honest. My lord, for aught I know. What dost thou think? <laughs> think, my lord. Think, my lord. <laughs> By heaven, thou echoes me as if there was a monster in thy thought, too hideous to be shown. Thou dost mean something. I heard thee say, even now. Thou likest not that when Cassio left my wife, what didst not like. And when I told thee he was of my counsel in my whole course of wooing, thou criedst indeed, and didst contract and purse thy brow together, as if thou then had set up in thy brain some horrible conceit. If thou dost love me, show me thy thoughts. My lord, <laughs> you know I love you. I think thou dost, and for I know thou art full of love and honesty, and waste thy words before thou givest them breath. Therefore these stops of thine fright me the more. For Michael Cassio, I dare be sworn I think he's honest. I think so, too. Men should be what they seem. Certain men should be what they seem. <clears throat> then I think Cassio's an honest man. Nay, there's more in this. I pray thee, speak to me as to thy thinkings, as thou dost ruminate, and give thy worst of thoughts the worst of worst. I pray you, my lord, utter my thoughts, uh, to say they are vile and false. Thou dost conspire against thy friend Iago, if thou but thinkst him wrong, and makes his ear a stranger to thy thoughts. It were not for your quiet, nor your good, nor my manhood, honesty, and wisdom to let you know my thoughts. What dost thou mean? Good name in man and woman, dear my lord, is the immediate jewel of their souls. Who steals my purse, steals trash. Tis something, nothing. Twas mine, tis his, has been slave to thousands. He that filches for me my good name robs me of that which not enriches him and makes me poor indeed. By heaven, I'll know thy thoughts. You cannot if my heart were in your hand, nor shall not whilst it is in my cup. Ah! 
Beware, my lord, of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster that doth mock the meat it feeds on. Oh, that cuckold lives in bliss, who certain of his fate loves not his wronger. But oh, what damned minutes tells he o'er, who dotes yet doubts, suspects yet strongly loves. Oh, misery! Poor and content is rich and rich enough, but rich as fineness is as poor as winter. To him whoever fears, he shall be poor. Why is God. this? Why is this? Thinks thou I live a life of jealousy? To follow still the changes of the moon with fresh suspicions? Oh. To be once in doubt is once to be resolved. Exchange me for a goat when I shall turn the business of my soul to such improbable and blown surmises matching thy inference. Oh, tis not to make me jealous. To say, my wife is fair. Feeds well, loves company, is free of speech, sings, plays, and dances well. Nor from mine own weak merits will I draw the smallest fear or doubt of her revolt. Oh, Lago, I'll see before I doubt, and on the doubt prove. And at the proof, there is no more but this, away at once with love or jealousy. I'm, I'm glad of this. <clears throat> For now I shall have greater reason to share with you the love and honesty that I bear you. So therefore, as I am bound, receive it from me. I, I speak not yet of proof. Look to your wife. Observe her well with Cassio. Wear your eyes thus, not jealous nor secure. I know our country disposition well. In Venice they do let God see the pranks they dare not show their husbands. Their best conscience is not to leave it undone, but to keep it unknown. Does thou say so? She did deceive her father, marrying you. And when she seemed to shake and fear your looks, she loved them most. And so she did. Why, go to then. She that is so young to give out such a seeming as to seal her father's eyes up close as oak, he thought twas witchcraft. But I am much to blame. <clears throat> I humbly do beseech you of your pardon for too much loving you. I, I am bound to thee forever. <laughs> I see this hath a little dash for spirits. Not a jot, not a jot. I fear it has. <sighs> would you would consider what is spoke comes from my love? My lord, I see your moves. I would pray you not to strain my speech to grosser issues, nor to longer reach the due suspicion. I will not. Should you do so, my lord, my speech should fall to such vile success as my thoughts ain't not at. Cassio's my worthy friend. <laughs> my lord, I see you're moved. No, not, not much moved. I, I do not think but Desdemona's honest. Well, <clears throat> long live she so. Long live you to think so. And yet, how nature, erring from itself. Aye, there's the point. But to be bold with you, not to accept the many proposed matches of her clime, complexion, and degree, wherein we see in nature all things tend. <laughs> One may smell in such a will, most ranked. Foul disproportion. Thoughts unnatural. Farewell! Farewell! If more thou dost perceive, let me know more. Set on thy wife to observe. Leave me, up. My lord, I take my leave. Why did I marry? This honest creature doubtless sees and knows more, much more than he unfolds. My lord, I would I might entreat your honor to scan this thing no farther. Leave it to time. Although, tis fit that Cassio should have this place, for well he fills it up with great ability. Yet if you please to hold him off a while, you shall by that perceive him and his means. Note if your wife... Strain his entertainment with any vehement or strong importunity. Much may be seen in that. In the meantime, hold her free. I do beseech you. Fear not my government. I once more take my leave. <laughs> this fellow is of exceeding honesty and knows all qualities with a learned spirit of human dealings. If I do, prove her haggard. Though her restraints are my heartstrings, I'd whistle her off and let her down the wind to pray at fortune. <sighs> Happily, for I am black and have not the soft parts of conversation as chamberers have. <laughs> 
or for I am declined in the veil of years. Oh, that's not much. She's gone. I'm abused, and my relief must be to loathe her. Oh, curse of marriage, that we could call these delicate creatures ours and not their appetites. Oh, look where she comes. If she be false, heaven mocks itself. I'll not believe it. How oh, now, my dear Othello? Your dinner and the generous islanders by you invited do attend your presence. I am to blame. Why do you speak so faintly? Are you not well? I have a pain upon my forehead here. Oh. Hey, mm. that's with watching. <laughs> Twill away again. Let me but bind it hard. Within this hour, it will be well. I see, yes. Ah, oh, yes. Mm, your napkin is too little. <laughs> Leave it alone. Come, come, come. I'll go in with you. Come. I'm very sorry. You are not well. <coughs> I'm glad I have found this napkin. This was her first remembrance from the moor. My wayward husband hath a hundred times wooed me to steal it. That she so loves the token, for he conjured her she should ever keep it. That she reserves it evermore about her to kiss and talk to. I'll have the work copied and give it Iago. What he will do with it, heaven knows, not I. I, nothing but to please his fantasy. Now, now, do you hear alone? Do not you chide. I have a thing for you. You have a thing for me. It's a common thing. Huh? To have a foolish wife. Uh, is that all? What will you give me for that same handkerchief? What handkerchief? What handkerchief? Why, that the Moor first gave to Desdemona, that which so often you did bid me steal. Was stolen from her? No, if faith! She let it drop by negligence. And I, to the advantage being here, took it up. Look, here it is. <laughs> Good wench. Uh, <laughs> I'm giving it to you. No! What will you do with it? That you have been so earnest to have me filch it. Oh. Oh, what's that for you? If it be not for some purpose of import, give it me again. Poor lady shall run mad, but she shall lack it. Be not ignored, aunt. I have need of this. Go. Leave me. Cassius lodging, lose this napkin. Trifles light as air are to the jealous confirmation strong as proofs of holy writ. This, I do something. More, already changes with my poison. The dangerous conceits are in their nature's poisons, which at the first are scarce found in distaste, but with a little act upon the blood, burn like the mines of sulfur. I did say so. Look where he comes. Not poppy nor mandragora nor all the drowsy syrups of the world shall ever medicine thee to that sweet sleep that oh, thou hadst yesterday. Me! Oh, now, General, no more of that. It's a fault! Thou hast set me on the rack! I swear, tis better to be much abused than but to know it a little. Oh, no, my lord. Oh, what sense had I of her stolen hours of lust? I thought it not, I saw it not, it hurt not me. I slept the next night well, was free, and merry. I found not Cassio's kisses on her lips. Oh, he that is robbed, not wanting what is stolen, let him not know it, and he's not robbed at all. I'm sorry to hear this. I had been happy. If the general camp, pioneers and all, had tasted her sweet body, so had I nothing known. Oh, farewell, the tranquil mind. Farewell, content. Farewell, the troops and the big wars. Farewell, pride, pump, and circumstance of glorious war. Farewell, Othello's occupation is gone. Impossible, my lord. Villain! Be sure thou prove my love a whore. Be sure of it. 
give me the ocular proof or by the words of my eternal soul thou had better have been born a dog than answer my wicked wrath just come to this. make me to see it or at least so prove it that the probation bear no proof or hints to hang a doubt on oh woe oh, upon my life oh, oh, no, Lord. if thou dost slander her and toy to me abandon all remorse on horror's head, or is accumulate, never pray more, for nothing can thou to damnation and pain up the dead. Oh, Grace, oh, oh, heaven forgive oh. me. Are you a man? No. Have you a soul that since God by you take mine office? Oh, wretched fool that lives to make thine honesty of vice. Uh. Take note, take note, O oh world. To be direct and honest is not safe. I thank you for this profit, and from hence will never love friends, yet love breeds such offense. Nay, stay. Thou should be honest. I should be wise, for honesty is a fool and loses what it works for. I, by heaven, I think my wife is honest, and I think she is not. I think that thou art just, and think thou art not. I'll have some proof. Her name that was as fresh as Diane's visions is now as black and begrimed as mine own face. Would I were satisfied? I see you were eaten up with passion. Now I do repent me that I put you to it. You would be satisfied? Would, nay, and may, and may, but how? How, my lord? How satisfied would you, the supervisor, grossly gape on, behold her topped? Oh, death and damnation. You were a tedious difficulty, I think, to bring them to such a prospect. Mm. But what then? How then? What, what should I say? Where's satisfaction? It is impossible you should see this, where they as prime as goats, as oh. hot as monkeys, as salt as wolves in pride. But yet, I say, if imputation and strong circumstances which lead directly to the door of truth will give you satisfaction, you might have. Give me a living reason she's disloyal. I do not like the office! <sighs> I am entered in this cause so far, pricked to it by foolish love and honesty. I will go on. I lay with Cassio lately. I'm being troubled with a raging tooth. I, I could not sleep. My lord, there are a kind of men so loose of soul that in their sleeps will mutter their affairs. <laughs> One of this kind is Cassio. My lord, in sleep, I heard him say, Sweet Desdemona. Let us be wary. Let us hide our loves. And then, sir, will he gripe and uh, wring my hand and cry, Oh, sweet creature. And then he kissed me, hard as if he plucked up kisses by the roots that grew on my lips. And then he laid his leg on my thigh and sighed and kissed and cried, Oh, cursed fate that gave thee to the Lord. Oh, monstrous, monstrous! Hey, this was but his dream. This denoted a foregone conclusion. Tis a shrewd doubt, though it be but a dream. And it may help to take another proof than to demonstrate thinly. I'll tear her to pieces! Hey, but be wise lest we see nothing done. She may be honest yet. I... Wait, tell me but this. Didst thou not sometimes see a handkerchief spotted with strawberries in your wife's hand? I gave her such one. It was my first gift. I, I know not that, but such a handkerchief. I, I'm sure it was your wife's. Did I today see Cassio wipe his chin with? If it be that. If it be that or any that was hers, it, stink, it speaks against her with the other proofs. Oh, that the slave had 40,000 lives. One would be too poor to weep for my revenge. Oh, now I see it's true. Look, Cassio. Oh, my fond love, does I blow to heaven, it's gone. Arise, black vengeance, from the hollow hell, yield up, O oh love, that crown and hearted throne to tyrannous hate. Swell bosom with thy frock, for tis of aspect's tongue. Be content. Blood, blood. Patience, I say, your mind perhaps may change. Never, Iago. Like to the Pontic Sea. Whose icy currents and compulsive course ne'er feels retiring yet, but keeps to on. Even so, my bloody thoughts with violent pace shall never look back. <gasps> now, by yond marble heaven, in the due reverence of a sacred vow, I hereby engage my words. Do not rise yet. <sighs> Witness your ever burning lights above. 
You elements that clip us round about witness that here Iago doth give up the execution of his wit, hands, heart to wrong the fellow's service. Let him command and to obey shall be in me what bloody business ever. I greet not thy love with vain thanks, but with acceptance bounteous, and will upon the instant put thee to it. Within three days, let me hear you say Cassio is not alive. My friend is dead. Just done at your request. But let her live. Damn her! Damn her, lewd minx! Come apart with me. I will withdraw to furnish me with some swift means of death for that fair devil. Now art thou my lieutenant. I'm your own forever. Chief Amelia. I... I know not, madam. Believe me, I would have rather have lost my purse full of crusados. And what my noble more is true of mind and made of no such baseness as jealous creatures are. Well, enough to put him to ill thinking. Is he not jealous? Who, he? <laughs> I think the son where he was born drew all such humors from him. Look where he comes. We'll not leave him now till Cassio be called to him. How is with you, my lord? Well, my good lady, how do you, Desdemona? Well, my good lord. Let me see your hand. This hand is moist, my lady. But yet hath felt no age, nor known no sorrow. <laughs> this argues fruitfulness and liberal heart. Hot, hot and moist. This hand of yours requires a sequester from liberty fasting and prayer, much castigation exercised devout. For here's a young and sweating devil that commonly rebels. Tis a good hand, a frank one. You may indeed say so, but t'was that hand that gave away my heart. A liberal hand. Come now, your promise. What promise, Chuck? I have sent to bid Cassio come speak with you. <clears throat> I have a salt and saw a room that offends me. Lend me thy handkerchief. Here, my lord. That which I gave thee. I have it not about me. Not? No, faith, my lord. That's a fault. That handkerchief did an Egyptian to my mother give. She was a charmer and could almost read the thoughts of people. She told her while she kept it, it would make her amiable and subdue my father entirely to her love. But if she lost it, or made a gift of it, my father's eye would hold her loathed and his spirits would haunt after new fancies. She dying gave it me and bade me when my fate would have me wife to give it her. I did so. Now take heed on it. To lose or to give it away were such perdition as nothing else could match. Is it possible? It's true. There's magic in the web of it. My faith is true. Most veritable. Now look to it well. Would to God that I had never seen it. Ha! Wherefore? Is lost? Is stolen? Speak! Is out of the way? Heaven bless us. Say you! It is not lost. But what if it were? How? I say it is not lost. Fetch! Give it to me! Uh, why, so I can. But I will not now. 
This is a trick to put me from my suit. I pray you let Cassio be received again. Fetch me the handkerchief! My mind misgives! Come, come. You'll never meet a more sufficient man. The handkerchief? I pray, talk me of Cassio. The handkerchief. A man that all his time hath founded his good fortunes on your love, shared dangers with you. The handkerchief! Faith, you are to blame. Sound! Is not this man jealous? I ne'er saw this before. Sure, there's some wonder in this handkerchief. I am most unhappy in the loss of it. Tis not a year or two shows us a man. They are all but stomachs and we all but food. They eat us hungrily and when they are full they belch us. There is no other way. To she must do them. Oh, the happiness. Go, importune her. How now, good Cassio? What's the news with you? Madam, my former suit. I do beseech you that by your virtuous means I may again exist and be a member of his love who with all the office of my heart entirely honor. I would not be delayed. Alas, thrice gentle Cassio, my advocation is not now in tune. My lord is not my lord. You must a while be patient. What I can do, I will. And more I will than for myself, I dare. Let that suffice you. Is my lord angry? He went hence but now. But and certainly in strange unquietness. Can he be angry? I have seen the, the cannon when it has blown his ranks into the air. And from his own arm puffed his own brother. But... Is he angry? Something of moment, and I will go speak with him. Does matter and indeed if he be angry? I prithee do so. Something sure of state, either from Venice or some unhatched practice made demonstrable here in Cyprus to him, hath huddled his clear spirit. Pray heaven it be state matters as you think, and no conception nor no jealous toy concerning you. Alas, the day I never gave him cause. But jealous souls will not be answered so. They are not ever jealous for the cause, but jealous for their jealous. It is a monster, but God upon itself, born of itself. Heaven keep that monster from Othello's mind. Lady, amen. I will go seek him. Cassio, walk hereabout. If I do find him fit, I'll move your suit and seek to effect it to my uttermost. I humbly thank your ladyship. Thank you, friend Cassio! What makes you from home? Else with you, most fair. Bianca, in faith, sweet love, I was coming to your house. And I was going to your lodging. Cassio, what? Keep a week away, seven days and seven nights, eight score, eight hours, and lovers absent hours more tedious than the dial eight score times. Oh, weary reckoning. Oh, pardon me. I have this while with leaden thoughts been pressed, but will any more continue at time? Give my wife a handkerchief. What then? What then? Tis 
hers, my lord, and being hers, I think she may bestow it on any man. She's protectress of her honor, too. May she give that! Her honor's in essence has not seen. They have it very often, they have it not. But for that handkerchief. By heaven, I would most gladly have forgotten. Thou said he had my handkerchief. Right, what of that? It's not so good now. What if I said I'd seen him do you wrong? Or heard him say... Hath he said anything? He hath, my lord, but be you well assured no more than he will unswear. What hath he said? I think that he did, I know not. What? 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 Like. With her. With her, on her, what you will. <laughs> lie with her. Oh, lie on her. We say lie on her when they belie her. Lie with her, thou that's fulsome. Handkerchief, confessions, handkerchief. Oh, to confess and be hanged for his labor. Oh. I tremble at it. It is not words that shakes me thus. Oh, I can see confessions. I can see who devil. Work on my medicine work. Thus credulous fools are caught, and many chaste and worthy dames, even thus all guiltless, meet reproach. <laughs> what ho, oh, Othello. Oh, my lord. My lord, I say, Othello. What's oh, no, the Lieutenant. The general had fallen into an epilepsy. It is his second fit. He had one Rub about the He knows forbear. The lethargy must have its quiet course, or else he foams at mouth, and by and by breaks out to savage madness. Look, he stirs. Will you withdraw yourself a while? And when he is recovered, I, when he's gone, I would, on very faint, speak to you. <clears throat> How now, general? How else for you? Have you not hurt your head? Do you mock me? I mock you not, by heaven. Which you would bear your fortune like a man. A haunted man is a monster and a beast. There's many a beast that in populous cities, and many a civil monster. <gasps> Did he confess it? Good sir, be a man. Stand you a while apart. Confine yourself in a patient list. While you were here, overwhelmed in your grief, Cassio came hither. I shifted him away and bade him anon return and here speak with me, the which he promised. You can hide yourself. I will make him tell the tale anew of where, how, how oft, how long ago, and when he hath and is again to cope your wife. Mark his gesture, very patience. Dost thou hear? I will be found most cunning in my patience, but dost thou hear most bloody? It's not amiss. But do keep time in all. Withdraw. Now will I question Cassio of Bianca, a strumpet that by selling her desires buys herself bread and clothes. <laughs> It is a creature that dotes on Cassio, as tis the strumpet's plague to beguile many and be beguiled by one. He, when he hears of her, cannot restrain from the excess of laughter. Look, here he comes. As he shall smile, so shall Othello go mad. Ah, now, Lieutenant, how else with you? The worse for that you give me the addition whose want even kills me. I apply Desdemona well, aunt, and you are sure. <laughs> now, if this suit lay in Bianca's power, how quickly should you speed? <laughs> Alas, <laughs> poor woman. I never knew a woman to love man so. Alas, poor rogue, I think it fates she loves me. I said, thank thee, last it out. Come, <clears throat> Lieutenant, she gives it out that you shall marry her. Do you intend it? <laughs> <laughs> I marry her? What a customer! For the very of charity to my wit, do not think it so unwholesome. <laughs> Faith, the cry goes that you marry her. Prithee, say true. <laughs> I'm a very villain else. This is the monkey's own giving out. She is persuaded I will marry her out of her own love and flattery, not out of my promise. He beckons me, now he tells the story. She was here even now. She haunts me in every place. Just the other day, I was on the sea bank, sea bank speaking with some Venetians, and thither comes the bubble. By this hand, she just falls about my neck. Oh, dear Cassio, as it were. So hangs and lulls and weeps upon me, so shakes and pulls me. <laughs> now he tells how she plucked them into my chamber. Well, I must leave her coming. Uh, before me, look where she comes. <laughs> what do you mean by this haunting of me? Let the devil and his damn haunt you! What mean you by this same handkerchief you gave me? must take out the work, a likely piece of work, that you should find it in your chamber and not know who left it there. This is the Minx's token, and I must take out the work. Here, give it your hobby horse. Wheresoever you 
my anger. Oh, no. Oh, no. If you will come to supper tonight, you may. If not, come when you're next prepared for. <laughs> after her, after her. Faith, yeah, it's it, so. So where are the street cells? Hey, will you stop there? Faith, I must. <laughs> well, I would chance to see you. I would very fain speak with you. Pretty come, will you? Go to. Farewell. <laughs> How shall I murder him, Did you perceive him and his, and his vice? Oh, Iago! And did you see that handkerchief? Was that mine? Yours by this hand. And oh. see how he prizes that foolish woman, your wife. She oh. gave it him, and he had given it his whore. I'll have him nine years of killing! Oh, a fine woman, a fair woman, a sweet hey, woman. Hey, 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 you must forget that. Hey, let her rot and perish and be damned tonight. No, she shall not live! I strike my heart in stone and it hurts my hand. Oh, the world hath not a sweeter creature. She might lie by an emperor's side and command her time. That is not your way. Hang her. I do but say what she is. Oh, the world hath not a sweeter creature. Oh, she's, she's so the, delicate. She's the worst for all this. Hey, hey, a thousand, a thousand times. And then of gentle a condition. Aye, too gentle. Oh, nay, that's certain. But the pity of it, Iago, oh, Iago, the pity of it! If you're so fond over her iniquity, give her patent to offend, for if it touches not you, it comes to nobody. Oh, oh, chop her into messes, cuckled me. It is foul. With my officer. And that is fouler. Get me some poison this night, Iago, this night. I will not contend with her, lest her body and beauty unprovide my mind again this night, Iago. Oh, not with poison. Strangle her in her bed. Even that bed she hath contaminated. Good, good. The justice of it pleases. Good. For Cassio, let me be his undertaker. I shall know more by midnight. Excellent, good. What noise is that? There's something from Venice. There's Lodovico. This comes from the Duke. See, your wife is with him. God save you, worthy general. With all my heart, sir. The Duke and the senators of Venice greet you. What's the news, good cousin Lodovico? <laughs> I am very, very glad to see you, senor. Welcome to Cyprus. Oh, thank you. Come down to Lieutenant Cassio. Uh, Libs, sir? Cousin, there's fallen between him and my lord an unkind breach, but you shall make all well. Are you sure of that? My lord? This fell you not to do as you were. He did not call. He's busy in the paper. Is there division twixt my lord and Cassio? Most unhappy one. I would do much to atone them for the love I bear to Cassio. Oh, fire and brimstone! My lord? Are you wise? What, is he angry? Maybe the letter moved him. Or as I think, they do command him home, deputing Cassio in his government. I might troth, I am glad on. Oh, indeed! My lord. I am glad to see you mad. Why, oh, sweet Othello. Devil! You <laughs> have not deserved this. My lord, this would not be believed in Venice, though I should swear I saw it. Tis very much. Make her amends. She weeps. Devil! Devil! Oh, if the earth could teems with woman's tears, each drop she falls would prove a crocodile out of her sight. I will not stay to offend you. Truly an obedient lady. I do beseech your lordship. Call her back. Mistress! My lord. What would you with her, sir? Who? I, my lord? I, you. You did wish that I would make her turn. Sir, she can turn and turn and yet go on and turn again. And she can weep, sir. Weep. Oh, if she's obedient, sir, as you say, obedient, very obedient, proceed you in your tears. Concerning this, sir, oh, well painted passion, get me away, I'll send for you anon. I will obey the mandate and return to Venice. Hands upon! Cassio shall have my place. I do, sir, entreat that we may sup together. Welcome to Cyprus, goats and monkeys! Is this the noble Moor whom our full senate call all in all sufficient? He is much changed. 
or his wits sake? Is he not light of brain? He's... That he is. I may not breathe my censure what he might be. What? Strike his wife? Faith, that was not so well. I would I knew that the stroke would prove the worst. Is it his use, or did the letters work upon his blood and you create this fault? Oh, alas, alas. It is not honesty in me to speak what I have seen and known. You shall observe him, and his own courses shall denote him so that I may save my speech. Do but go after and mark how he continues. I am sorry that I am deceived in him. So you have seen nothing, Nor then. ever heard, nor ever did suspect. Yes, you have seen she and Cassio together. But then I saw no harm, and then I heard each syllable that breath made up between them. What did they never whisper? Never, my lord. Or send you out of the way? Never! To fetch her fan, her gloves, her mask, nor nothing? Never, my lord. That's strange. I durst, my lord, to wager she is honest. Lay down my soul at stake. If you think other, remove your thought. It doth abuse your bosom. If any wretch hath put this in your head, may heaven requite it with the servant's curse. For if she be not honest, chaste, and true, there's no man happy. Bid her come hither. Go! She says enough. She's a simple bard that cannot say as much. This is a subtle whore. A closet lock and key of villainous secrets, and yet she'll kneel and pray, I've seen her do it. My lord, what is your will? I pray you come hither, Chuck. What is your pleasure? Look in my eyes. Oh. Let me see your face. What horrible fancy is this? Some of your function, mistress, shut the door. Cough a cry. Mm, if anybody come, your mystery dispatch. Upon my knees, what doth your speech import? I understand a fury in the words, but not the words. Why? What art thou? Your wife, my lord, your true and loyal wife. Come, swear it. Damn thyself, swear that thou art honest. Heaven doth truly know it. Heaven knows thou art false as hell. To whom, my lord? With whom? How am I false? Ah, oh, Desdemona, away, away. Alas, this heavy day, why do you weep? Am I the motive of these tears, my lord? If happily you, my father, do suspect an instrument of this your calling back, lay not your blame on me. If you have lost him, I have lost him too. Had it pleased heaven to try me with affliction, to rain all kind of sores and shames on my bare head, steep me in poverty to the very lips, given to captivity, me and my utmost hopes, I should have found some place in my heart, a drop of patience. But alas! To be made a fixed figure for the time of scorn. To point his slow and unmoving finger at, I could bear that too well, very well. But what I have garnered up my heart, whether I should live or bear no life, the fountain from which my current runs or else dries up, to be discarded thence, or to keep it as a cistern for foul toads to not engender in. Honest. Oh, I thou weed, who art so lovely fair and smelt so sweet, the senses ache at thee, I wish thou ne'er been born. Alas, what ignorant sin have I committed? Was this fair paper, this most goodly book, made to write whore upon? What committed? Oh. Public commoner? I should make very forges of my cheeks that would to cinders burn up modesty should I speak thy deeds. Oh, impudent strumpet! By heaven, you do me wrong! What? Are you not a strumpet? No. As I am a Christian, 
if to preserve this vessel from my lord, from any other foul, unlawful touch, be not to be a strumpet. I am not. Not a whore. No, as I shall be saved. Is possible. Heaven forgive us. I cried thee mercy then. I took you for that cunning whore of Venice that married with Othello. You mistress! who hold the office opposite St. Peter and the gates of hell? Our course is done. I have money for your pains. I pray you turn the key and keep our counsel. Alas, what does this gentleman conceive? How do you, mistress? How do you, my good lady? Good faith, half asleep. Good madam, what's the matter with my lord? With who? Why, with my lord, madam. Who is thy lord? He that is yours, good lady. I have none. Do not talk to me, Amelia. I cannot weep. No answers have I none but what should go by water. Tonight. Lay on my bed my wedding sheets. Remember. And call thy husband hither. A change indeed. Tis meet I should be used so. Very meet. How have I been behaved that he might stick the smallest opinion on my least misuse? What is your pleasure, madam? How was with you? I cannot tell. Those that do teach the young babes. Do it with gentle means and easy tasks. He might have chid me so, for in good faith I am a child to chide it. <laughs> what is the matter, lady? Alas, Iago, my lord hath so behoard her, thrown such despite and heavy terms upon her as true hearts cannot bear. Why did he so? Am I that name, Iago? What name, fair lady? He called such her whore. Said, my lord did say I was. A beggar in his drink could not have laid such terms upon his callot. When did he so? I do not know. But I am sure I am not such. Shh, 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 shh. Do not weep. Do not weep. Has she Last forsook day. so many noble matches, her father and her country and her friends, to be called whore? Would it not make one weep? It is my wretched fortune. Oh, beshrew him for it. How came this trick upon him? Heaven doth know. I will be hanged if some eternal villain, some busy and insinuating rogue, some cogging, cousining villain to get some office have not devised this slander. I will be hanged else. Aye, it is impossible. There is no such man. If any such there be, let heaven pardon him. A halter pardon him, and hell gnaw his bones. Why should he call her whore? Who keeps her company? What time, what place, what form, what likelihood? And the Moors abused by some most villainous knave, some base, notorious knave, some scurvy fellow. Oh, speak within door. Fie upon it. Twas some such squire that turned your wit the seamy side without and made you to suspect me with the Moor. You are a fool. Go to. Uh, alas. Iago. What shall I do to win my lord again? Good friend. Go to him. But by this light of heaven, I know not how I lost him. Here oh I kneel. If e'er my will did trespass against his love, either in discourse of thought or actual deed, or that mine eyes, mine ears, or any sense delighted them in any other form, or that I do not yet and ever did, and ever will, though he do shake me off to beggarly divorcement, love him dearly, comfort, forswear me. May be content. This but his humor, <laughs> the business of the state, does him offense, and he does chide with you. Twere no it is but so. Go in. Weep not. All will be well.
How now, Rodrigo? I do not find that thou dealest justly with me. But in the contrary. Every day thou daffest me with some device, Iago. I will indeed no longer endure it, nor am I yet persuaded to put up in peace what already I foolishly suffered. Will you hear me, Rodrigo? Faith, I have heard too much, and your words and performances are no kin together. You charge me most unjustly. With naught but truth! I have wasted myself out of my means. The jewels you have had from me to deliver to Desdemona with half of corrupted a priestess. You have told me that she hath received them and returned me expectations and comforts of sudden respect and acquaintance. But I find none. Go to very well. Very well. Go to. I cannot go to men, nor tis that very well. By this hand, I say tis scurvy. Very well. I said tis not very well. I will make myself known to Desdemona. If she will return me my jewels, I will give over my suit and repent my unlawful solicitation. If not... Assure yourself, I will seek satisfaction of you. You have said now. Aye, and said nothing but what I protest intendment of doing. But now I see this metal in thee. And from this instant do build on thee a better opinion than ever before. Rodrigo, give me thy hand. It hath not appeared. Rodrigo, if thou hast that in thee indeed, which I have greater reason now to believe than ever, I mean courage, valor, purpose. This night show it. If thou the next night following enjoy not Desdemona, take me from this world with treachery and devise engines for my life. Well, what is it? Is it within reason and compass? There is a special commission come from Venice to depute Cassio in Othello's place. Is that true? Or that Othello and Desdemona return again to Venice? No, no. He goes into Mauritania and takes away with him the fair Desdemona, unless his abode be lingered here by some accident, wherein nothing is so determinate as the removing of Cassio. How do you mean, removing him? By making him incapable of Othello's place. Knocking out his brains. Is that you would have me do? Aye, if you would do yourself a prophet and a right, he sups tonight with the harlotry, and thither will I go to him. He knows not yet of his honorable fortune. If you will watch his going thence, which is a fashion to fall out between twelve and one, you may take him at your pleasure. I will be nearby to second you in your attempt, and he shall fall between us. Stand not amazed at it, but go along with me. About it. I will hear further reason for this. And you shall be satisfied. will do me good to walk. Madam, good night. I humbly thank your ladyship. Your honor is most welcome. Will you walk, sir? Oh, Desdemona. My lord. Get you to bed on the instant. I will be returned forthwith. Dismiss your attendant there. Look to be done. I will, my lord. How goes it? He looks gentler than he did. He says he will return incontinent. And hath commanded me to go to bed and bade me to dismiss you. Dismiss me? It was his bidding. Therefore, good Amelia, give me my nightly wearing and adieu. We must not now displease him. Wish you had never seen him. So would not I. My love doth so approve him that even his stubbornness 
his checks, his frowns. Prithee, unpin me. Have grace and favor in them. Oh, I've laid those sheets you begged me on the bed. Those one. <laughs> Good faith, how foolish are our minds. If I do die before thee, prithee shroud me in one of those same sheets. <laughs> come, come, you talk. <laughs> My mother had a maid called Barbary. She was in love, and he she loved proved mad and did forsake her. She had a song of Willow, an old thing twas, but it expressed her fortune, and she died singing it. <laughs> that song tonight will not go from my mind. I have much to do, but to go hang my head all at one side. And sing it like poor Barbary. This Lodovico is a proper man. He speaks well. The poor soul sat sighing by a sycamore tree. Sing all the green willow. Her hand on her bosom, her head on her knee. Sing willow, willow, willow. The fresh streams ran by her and murmured her moan. Sing willow, willow, Her salt tears fell from her and softened the stone. May by thee. Yes, yes, yes. Sing willow, willow, willow. For thee hide thee, he'll come anon. Sing all the green willow. Must be my God. Let nobody blame him, his scorn I approve. Nay, that's not next. Hark, who is that knocks? It's the wind. I called my love false love, and what said he then? Sing willow, willow, willow. If I court more women, you'll couch with more men. So get thee gone, good night. <laughs> Mine eyes do itch, does that boat weeping? Tis neither here nor there. I have heard it said so. Men, <laughs> these men. Dost thou in conscience think, tell me, Amelia, that there be women to abuse their husbands in such gross kind? I, there be some such, no doubt. Wouldst thou do such a deed for all the world? Why would not you? <laughs> no, by this heavenly light. Nor I neither by this heavenly light. I might do it as well in the dark. Wouldst <laughs> thou do such a deed for all the world? The world's a huge thing. It is a great price for a small vice. In troth, <laughs> I think thou wouldst not. I in troth, I think I should, and I'd do it when I had done it. Mary, I would not do such a thing for a joint ring, nor for measures of law, nor gowns, petticoats, nor caps, nor any petty exhibition. But for the whole world, it's pity. Who would not make her husband a cuckold to make him a monarch? Oh. 
I should venture purgatory for it. Oh, beshrew me if I would do such a wrong for the whole world. Why, the wrong is but a wrong in the world. And having the world for your labor, tis a wrong in your own world. And you might quickly make it right. I do not think there is any such woman. <laughs> Nay, a dozen. And as many to the vantage it would play the world they stored for. But I do think it is their husbands' faults if wives do fall. Say that they slack their duties and pour our treasures into foreign laps, or else break out in peevish jealousies, throwing restraint upon us? Or say they strike us? Scant our former having into spite? Why, we have galls. And though we have some grace, yet have we some revenge. Let husbands know their wives have sense like them. They see and smell and have their palates both for sweet and sour as husbands have. What is it that they do when they change us for others? Is it sport? I think it is. And doth affection breed it? I think it doth. Is it frailty that thus errs? It is so, too. And have not we affections, desires for sport and frailties as men have? Then let them use us well. Else let them know the ills we do, their ills instruct us so. Good night. Good night. <laughs> God me such use this end. Not to pick bad from bad, but by bad men. This bulk. Quick, quick, straight will he come. Fear nothing, I'll be at thy elbow. It makes us or it mars us. Think on that and fix most firm in thy resolution. I'll be near at hand. I may miscarry in it. I have rubbed this young quat almost to the sense, and he grows angry. Now, whether he kill Cassio or Cassio him, or each do kill the other, every way makes my gain. Live Rodrigo, he calls me to a restitution large of gold and jewels that I have bobbed from him as gifts to Desdemona. It must not be. If Cassio do remain, he hath a daily beauty in his life which makes me ugly. And besides, the moor may unfold me to him, and there stand I in much peril. No. He must die. Be it so. I hear him coming. Oh, 
Oh, and human dog. What? Kill men in the dark? Where be these bloody thieves? Help! Oh! Murder! This town is so sudden! Who is there? Are you good or evil? Of good as well you know. Senor Lodovico? He, sir! I cry your pardon, sir. Here's Cassio, hurt by villain Cassio. Oh, how his brother. My leg is cut in two. Oh, very heaven forbid. Oh. Light. Gentlemen, I'll bind it with his cloth. What's the matter? Who is it that cries? Who is it cries? Cassio, my sweet Cassio. Oh, notable strumpet. Might you suspect, Cassio, who they are? Who has thus mangled you? No, I'm sorry to find you thus. I've been to seek you. Gentlemen all, I do suspect this trash to be a part of this injury. Light. No, we just face it, no. It's my friend and my dear countryman, Rodrigo. No. Yes, sure, Rodrigo. What a Venice. Not even he. Did you know him? No, him, I. How is it with you, Cassio? Some good gentleman, bear him hence carefully. I will fetch the general surgeon. For your mistress, you save you your labor. He that lies slain here, Cassio, was my friend. What malice is between you? Not in the world, nor do I know the man. What? Are you, are you pale? Bear him out of the air! Look, you pale mistress. Behold her, Lodovico. Look on her, see how guiltiness speaks, though tongues were out of use. Alas, what is the matter? What is the matter, husband? Cassio here was set on in the dark by Rodrigo and fellows that escaped. He's almost slain and Rodrigo dead. Alas, good gentlemen, alas, good Cassio. This is the fruits of whoring. I prithee, Amelia, go know of Cassio where he supped tonight. What do you shake at that? He hath supped at my house, but therefore I shake not. Oh, did he so? I charge you go with him. Fie upon thee, strumpet! I am no strumpet, but as life as honest as you that thus abuse me. As I fall, fie upon thee. <laughs> what, mistress, you must tell us another tale. Amelia, quick, run and tell my lord and lady what hath happened. Go on afore. This is the night that either makes me or fordoes me quite. shed her blood, nor scar that whiter skin of hers than snow and smooth as monumental alabaster. Yet she must die, else she'll betray more men. Put out the light, and then put out the light. If I quench thee, thou flaming minister, I can again thy former light restore should I repent me. At once put out thy light, thy cunning's pattern of excelling nature. I know not where is that Promethean in heat that can thy light illume. Once I plucked the rose, I cannot give it vital growth again. It needs must wither, I'll smell it on the tree. Oh. Balmy breath that dost almost persuade justice to break her sword. One more, one more. Be thus when thou art dead and I will love thee. One more, this the last. So sweet was ne'er so fatal. Oh, I must weep. <laughs> but they are cruel tears. This sorrow's heavenly. It strikes where it doth love. She wakes. Who's there? Othello. I 
it is the moment. So you come to bed, my lord. Have you prayed tonight, Desdemon? Aye, my lord. If you bethink you, un any crime unreconciled is yet to heaven and grace, so listen for it straight. Alas, my lord, what may you mean by that? Well, do it. Be brief. I will walk by. I will not kill thy unprepared spirit. No, heaven forbid. I will not kill thy soul. Talk you of killing? Aye, I do. And heaven have mercy on me. Amen with all my heart. If you say so, I hope you will not kill me. And yet I fear you. Why I should fear, I know not. Since guiltiness, I know not. And yet I feel, I fear. Think on thy sins. They are loves I bear to you. And for that thou diest. That death's unnatural, that kills for loving. Peace, be still. I will so. What's the matter? That handkerchief that I loved and gave to thee, thou gavest to Cassio. No, no by my life <laughs> and soul, send for the man and ask him. Sweet soul, take heed. Take heed of perjury. Thou art on thy deathbed. Ay, but not yet to die. Yes, presently. Therefore confess thy sins freely. For to deny each article with oath will not remove nor choke the strong. I groan with all. Thou art to die. Then Lord have mercy on me. I say amen. And have you mercy too? Oh. I never did offend you in my life. Never loved Cassio, but with such general warranty of heaven as I might love, I never gave him tokens. By heaven! I saw the handkerchief in his hand. O perjured woman, thou makes me call what I intend to do a murder which I thought a sacrifice. I saw the handkerchief. He found it then. I never gave it him. Sent for him hither. Let him confess the truth. He hath confessed. What, my lord? That he hath used thee. How? Unlawfully? Aye. He will not say so. No. His mouth is stopped. Honest Iago had taken order for it. My fear interprets. What, is he dead? Hath all his hairs been lives, my great revenge had stomach for them all. Alas, <laughs> he is betrayed. Die undone. Thou trumpet, weeps thou for him to my face. Banish me, my lord, but kill me not. Down, trumpet. <laughs> kill me tomorrow, let me live. Hey, if you strive. <laughs> Oh, is this death? Not dead, not yet quite dead. I that am cruel, I'm yet merciful. I will not let thee linger in thy pain. So, so, so. My lord, what ho? Who is there? I would speak a word with you, my lord. I 
think she stirs again. No. What's best to do? If she come in, she'll, she'll speak to my wife. My wife. My wife! What wife? I have no wife! Oh, oh. It's oh a good my lord, I would speak a word with you! Ah! Uh, I had forgot thee! Ah, uh, come in, Emilia! What's the matter with thee now? Good my lord, yonder spell murder's done! What now? But now, my lord! It is the very air of the moon! Cassio, my lord, hath killed a young Venetian called Rodrigo! Rodrigo killed, and Cassio killed. No, Cassio is not killed. Falsely, falsely murdered. Oh, Lord, what cry is that? That what? Not at the last, that is my lady's voice. like a liar going to burning hell. Who was I that killed her? Oh, the more angel she and you the blacker devil. She had turned to folly and she was a whore. Thou dost belie her and thou art a devil. She was false as water. Her precious fire to say that she was false. She was heavenly true. Cassio did top her. As thy husband else. I had been damned beneath all depths in hell, but I did proceed upon just ground to this extremity. Thy husband knew it all. My husband? Thy husband! That she was false to wed me? I was he that told me on her first. Had she been true, if heaven had made me such another world of one pure entire chrysolite, I'd not have sold her for it. My husband? I, thy husband, good honest Iago, Hates the slime that sticks on filthy deeds. My husband? What needs this iterant woman? I say, thy husband. Oh, mistress, villainy hath made mocks with love. My husband say that she was false to wedlock. Thy husband! If he say so, may his pernicious soul rot half a grain a day. He lies in the heart. She was too fond of her most filthy bargain. <laughs> Do thy words. This deed of thine is no more worthy heaven than thou wast worthy her. You are bad. You have not had the power to harm me as I have to be hurt. Oh, make thee known though I lost twenty lives. Help! Help! Oh, help! The war has killed my mistress! Murder! Murder! What is the matter? Come right now, General. You, you have done well that men must lay their murders on your neck. What is the matter? Disproof. This villain, if thou beest a man, he says you told him that his wife was false. I know thou didst not, thou art not such a villain. Speak, for my heart is full. I told him what I thought and told no more than what he found himself was apt and true. But did you ever tell him she was false? I did. You told a lie, an odious, damned lie upon my soul, a lie, a wicked lie. She false with Cassio did say with Cassio? With Cassio, mistress, go to charm your tongue. I will not charm my tongue. I am bound to speak. My mistress here lies murdered on her bed. Oh, and your reports have set the murders on. They're not masters. It is true indeed. This is strange truth. Monstrous act. Villainy. 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 I think upon it. I think. I smell it. Oh, villainy. I thought so then. I'll kill myself with grief! What, are you mad? I charge you, get home! Good gentlemen, let me have leave to speak. Tis proper I obey him, but not now. Perchance, Iago, I shall ne'er go home. <laughs> Nay, lay thee down and roar, for thou hast killed the sweetest innocent that e'er did lift up I. Lucy was a foul one! <laughs> I, I scarce did 
did know you, cousin. <laughs> there lies your niece, <laughs> whose breath indeed these hands have newly stopped. For just a moment. It is pitiful. But Iago knows that she with Cassio have the act of shame a thousand times committed. And she did give him the token. It was a handkerchief. I saw it in his hand. My father gave my mother. Oh, God. Oh, heavenly God. Sounds you hold your peace. Twill out. Twill out. I? Peace? No. I will speak as liberal as the North. Let heaven and men and devils, let them all, all, all cry shame against me and I will speak. Was, I will yeah, not. Oh, God. Oh, God. The, the war. That handkerchief I speaks to. I found my fortune and I did give my husband. He begged of me to steal it. Stealing his whore. He did Cassio a last. No, no, I found no. it. And I did give my husband. Still thou liest. I do not, my husband. I do not, good gentlemen. I do not. Oh, thou murderous coxcomb. What should such a fool do with so good a wife? Are there no stones in heaven but what serve for the thunder? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! 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 <laughs> Tis a notorious villain. Take you this weapon which I've here recovered from the moor. Come, guard the door without. Let him not pass, but kill him rather. I'll laugh for that same villain, for tis a damned slave. More. She was chaste. She loved thee, cruel more. So come, my soul, to this, as I speak true. Cousin, I must come forth. Thou hast said, and it will cost thee dearly. Thou hast no weapon, and perforce must suffer. Well, look in upon me, and speak with me, or as naked as I am, I will assault thee. What is the matter? Be not afraid, though you see me weapon. It's my journey's end. My butt and very sea mark of my utmost sail. Do you go back dismayed? Tis a lost fear. Man but rush against Othello's breast and he retires. Where should Othello go? Oh. How dost thou look now? Oh, you start witch, as pale as thy smock. When we shall meet at Compton, seems so snatch at me. Oh. Cold, cold, my God. Girl, oh. Oh, cursed, cursed slave! Whip me, you devils, from the possession of this heavenly sight! Roast me about in sulfur, blow me about in winds, wash me in ghosts of liquid fire, Desdemona's dead! Oh. Where is this rash and most unfortunate man? <sighs> That's he that was of the low. Here Bring I the am. For it. <sighs> I look down at his feet, but that's a fable. If thou beest the devil, I cannot kill thee! I bleed, sir, but not killed. I am not sorry, neither. I'd have thee live, for in my sense to die is happiness. O oh, thou, Othello, that were once so good, what shall be said to thee? Why, anything. An honorable murderer, if you will. For not I did in hate, but all in honor. This wretch hath part confessed his villainy. Mm. Did you and he consent in Cassio's death? Aye. Dear General, I never gave you cause. I do believe it, and I ask your pardon, too. I pray you, would you demand this to me double wine? You demand me nothing. What you know, you know. And from this time forth, I will never speak a word. How came you, Cassio? By that handkerchief that was my wife's. I found it in my chamber. And he himself confessed it, but he <gasps> found that there he placed for a special purpose which oh, to his desire. Oh, oh. You must forsake this room and go with us. Your power and your command is taken off, and Cassio rules in Cyprus. For this slave, 
If there be any cunning no. cruelty that can torment him much and hold him long, it shall be his. Come, bring away. Soft you. A word or two before you go. I have done the state some service, and they know it. No more of that. I pray you, in your letters, when you these unlucky deeds relate, speak of me as I am. Nothing extenuate nor set down aught in malice. Speak of one who loved not wisely but too well. Of one not easily jealous but being wrought perplexed in the extreme. Of one who, like the base Judean, threw away a pearl richer than all his tribe. Sit you down this! <gasps> Kiss thee, or I kill thee. No way but this, killing myself, die upon a kiss. Ooh. This did I fear, but thought he had no weapon, for he was great of heart. O oh, Spartan dog, look on the tragic loading of this bed. This is thy work. Myself with great award, and to the state this heavy act with heavy heart related. <laughs> 